while there's these physical structures here that can slow the water up and catch the topsoil and, and hold the seed, you're going to have healthy country. We're here on Belmont Station, um, on the clay pen on Belmont Station, which is about 30 kilometres northwest of Broken Hill. This is where we've done some extensive groundworks and, and planted 15,000 old man saltbush seedlings with some funding from the Western CMA. The bushes have planted a bit over 12 months ago and um, as you can see in the background they're doing pretty well and most of them over a metre high. Generally what used to happen with this area was uh, you would get some rain and any heavy rain never, never really did anything to this area because how hard and compacted the clay pan was, as soon as it rained heavy it would sheet off and run, run off quite quickly. But if you did have nice, gentle, slow rain, especially in winter, you would get annual herbages grow in the area. Maybe not so much on the clay pan, but on the high areas. And as soon as it dried off or we got some decent winds, because it was so open, the wind would sweep bits of sand and that off the, off the clay pans and basically sandblast the, the smaller shrubs and copper burrs and grasses and that sort of thing. You know, it just wouldn't last. The, the feed just wouldn't last here. It wasn't protected by anything, it was too open to the elements. You got a bit of a quick rain, the water would run off and then, then uh, dry out fairly quickly because there was nothing to hold it in, in the area. All the water runs to the northwest, so we've done the lines of saltbush running across the, the line of water flow. And the idea of, of having the saltbush here was to build some sort of physical barrier that could, could slow water up running off the clay pan country, but also when uh, in 2009 when the, when the wind blew and the dust storms came, collect the topsoil. I'm standing next to a, a saltbush that's been here for, for over 20 years. It would have grown from um, some seeding and contour furrowing that was done here in the late 80s. As you can see in here, um, there's quite a bit of topsoil that's been accumulated in here. The, the bushes caught it from the du du dust storms and that, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, it's fairly hard and compact in there, but uh, yeah, there'd be nearly two foot of topsoil that the bush has caught there and, and that's the idea of the rows to, um, to uh, form, form their own sort of little sand hills and form a bit of a, a barrier to hold water up and, and uh, catch seed and, and uh, sort of break the wind as well. The most um, pleasing aspect of, of what's happened since we've done these earthworks and put the salt bush in is just the earth banks themselves and, and the disturbance of having the, the bushes growing here has, has let other, other um, native species like perennial plants grow. Here we've got some cane grass growing over here, some copper burr, black blue bush, along with the salt bush, and uh, a lot of this salt bush is sort of going to seed as well, so hopefully this will revegetate. Our rows are, are um, four metres apart and then 20 metres apart, and the idea of that is one, it spreads the salt bush over a larger area, so we're sort of rehabilitating a larger area but this clay pan is sort of like a, a roof when when the water falls when rain falls water runs straight off the clay pan but it runs into the rows of salt bushes and it helps give the salt bushes a, a better drink rather than if they were competing close together in, in closer rows um, it also allows for for more vegetation to grow in between the rows salt bush as a fodder source for for livestock is, is fairly high in protein but not very high in uh, energy so um, grasses and that sort of thing growing in between the rows gets a better sort of food source for the sheep or cattle, whatever you're going to put on it. The salt bush is a food source, 15,000 plants here, which you know roughly should be enough feed for 500 sheep for two months. So this is the salt bush block for Shannon's paddock, which is 10,000 acre paddock. You, you would run core breeders of 500 ewes in that paddock. if. If Shannon's paddock gets to a critical stage where I think it needs to be destocked or you know we have a good rain and, and uh, I want to let the perennial bladder salt bush and that in Shannon's paddock seed and go through a seeding cycle or something, I can destock Shannon's paddock into the salt bush paddock and, and use up the fodder source here while giving you know the larger area of Shannon's paddock 10,000 acres a rest. So apart from rabbits, it's a pretty good fence nothing much gets in and out. That allows um, you know, control over uh, protecting the seedlings when you plant them and also once, you, once you're utilising them for a feed source you can, you can put whatever you want in and keep whatever you want out. That, that's fairly important to the, to the project because um, it's no good planting 15,000 seedlings and, and uh, 
having a, a mob of roos come through and, and pick half of them off. You know, this is just the start of what it will look like. I think uh, the saltbush will possibly self-seed itself and, and grow a bit more here and also um, as the water runs off this area out into watercourses and out into the rest of the Belmont will we'll help seed other areas and watercourses of Belmont with saltbush as well.